All right. Uh, let me go back uh, to the share. All right, here, let me share this. Here, okay. So here, as, uh, as I mentioned, the big concepts do not really have uh, a definition that would be agreed upon from all uh, researchers. It doesn't happen this way. And the reason is that the definitions really come from how you use the concept, okay? And artificial intelligence has many, many uh, 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 different ways to be used to solve many, many different uh, problems. And that's why you wouldn't really find um, a single definition for it. As I mentioned, those are the four commonly agreed upon, okay? So to act humanely, to act rationally, uh, to think humanely and to think rationally, okay? And of course, uh, you know, I mean, um, thinking humanely doesn't really have to be thinking in a rational way, as we all know. So uh, this is the objective of having um, uh, artificial intelligence in general, okay? Now, when we think about artificial intelligence, you will find uh, that artificial intelligence can broadly be classified into two categories. The first one, we call it narrow, narrow AI, narrow artificial intelligence. What is narrow artificial intelligence? It's a, a way of artificial intelligence that you use to solve a specific problem. So the intelligence is in this specific problem, but it doesn't really uh, handle any other uh, uh, problem or any other aspect that is not in the domain that you have defined before you apply the AI, okay? My phone uh, message is having, uh, I don't know what's going on here. All right, oh, all right. Uh, okay. All right, yes, uh, whoever wants to record, please re record, that's totally fine. All right, <laughs> no problem. Okay, so that's the narrow AI that, you know, we use it for solving a specific problem, okay? Something like Google search, as an example. Google search is AI uh, powered, by the way. It is AI and it is big data as well. And whenever we mention big data, AI uh, comes you know, without even the need to mention it. Why? Because big data by definition is huge enough that it needs you know, intelligent techniques to deal with. Okay, so whenever you, you, you hear the word uh, 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 big data, you know that there is uh, uh, some kind of AI that is associated with the problem you're trying to solve. Um, image recognition. And image recognition is one of the uh, uh, things that is being used nowadays in every aspect in life. So from security cameras that identify in, in train stations, as an example, that identify people with possible, uh, you know, uh, uh, having guns or having bombs or whatever. This is being uh, uh, recognized by image recognition techniques to uh, the phone that you're holding that you know has a security uh, uh, a feature that recognizes your face and therefore it uh, unlocks. You know, the uh, 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 chatbots, uh, Siri, Alexa, you know, and those kind of personal assistance. Of course, the self-driving cars, you know, the self-driving cars, they also depend. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. I'm recording. I'll share the record. Okay. I'm really sorry. I'm recording. 
Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll share it, I promise. All right? Okay, so uh, here, uh, uh, you know, the self-driving cars uh, are also smart. And for the self-driving cars, uh, they need to uh, make a decision, make a decision about the action that they need to take, all right? The self-driving cars exist in an environment, so they're surrounded by an environment. Uh, they, they, they actually sense the environment, they take a decision, and then they apply back to the environment, okay? And this is uh, so th this uh, suits very much something called uh, reinforcement learning, as I will talk about uh, uh, later. Okay. Uh, before I uh, uh, continue, is uh, everything clear here? Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Guys, is everything clear? Yes. Here. All right, uh, I'm allowing people to record. Okay, anyway, let me continue now. <clears throat> um, so this is the narrow AI. Okay, the Google search, those are just examples, by the way. Uh, Google search, image processing recognition, Siri, Alexa, uh, self-driving cars, and you name it. You know, uh, the, uh, uh, the e-traffic system that the guys here are uh, doing, you know, the group of the e-traffic, that's also narrow AI, right? Why? Because it's an AI that deals with a specific problem that is predefined. How about the general AI? The general AI is like this uh, lady. I don't know if you guys know her. Anyone knows this one? What is this robot? Sophia robot. Huh? Just a second. I'm sorry, I, I have to uh, respond to something quick. I'm really sorry about that. It's gonna be a minute, I'm really sorry. <sighs> okay. Okay, let's go back. So anyone knows this robot? She actually visited Kuwait, by the way. She actually visited Kuwait. Her name is Sophia, if you heard about her. Sophia. Sophia is an example of general AI. Why? Uh, she's so smart that her intelligence almost matches the human intelligence. Okay, and I don't know if you have seen the YouTube videos for her, she actually uh, outsmarted the interviewer and she uh, kept telling, you know, sarcasm and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, that tells you how smart this robot is because when we talk about sarcasm, you're talking about culture, you know, sarcasm and culture are, you know, uh, you cannot have sarcasm without having a culture, you know. So the robot developed culture, culture it developed culture and uh, it can actually uh, uh, talk, debate, negotiate. She can uh, make uh, sarcasm and so on and so forth. And she definitely outsmarted the interviewer. I would uh, invite you guys to see her videos uh, uh, with the interviewers. Uh, one of the uh, interviews that she did, the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Saudi Arabia was there. And he actually granted her the uh, uh, kingdom uh, citizenship. So she, she, she's actually uh, Saudi. She has the Saudi passport and citizenship. And this is not a joke. This is actually true. 
you can actually see it in the uh, video. You know, he actually granted her the uh, Saudi uh, uh, citizenship. So uh, why AI? How, what, like in what field we use AI? Almost everything, almost everything. Uh, let me start with this uh, 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 light sign. Okay, because, uh, you know, my, one of my groups here are doing this, you know, traffic. Use AI in traffic. Why? Well, to make sure that you're managing traffic in an efficient way, you don't cause bottlenecks. You uh, take into consideration the uh, emergency vehicles. So you make way for the uh, emergency uh, vehicles in, of course, uh, a, a smart way. So uh, ongoing planning. Um, and the project that the people, uh, and the guys here are doing is also about, you know, uh, uh, making sure that ev anyone is, everyone is safe. And how do they do that? By detecting the motion of cars and they predict based on the uh, uh, vehicle, based on how fast the vehicle is coming, based on whether the vehicle is slowing down or not, based on many, many things, they actually take a decision whether this vehicle can stop when the uh, 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 light signal is red or not. And based on that, they take actions. And the actions is if the vehicle is approaching with high speed, they will actually turn every other signal to be red and allow this road to move in order to, uh, you know, uh, uh, make sure that everyone is safe. So this car passes. And their system also captures the plate number of this particular vehicle, manipulate the uh, plate number, recognize the plate number and the type of the car and send this to, you know, the database in order for that guy to uh, face penalties or whatever uh, uh, that guy needs to uh, face, okay? So traffic, planning, so, you know, road planning, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, GPS and so on. Self-driving vehicles, self-driving vehicles, um, uh, 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 vehicle to vehicle, so uh, we have something called Internet of Things. What is Internet of Things? Internet of Things is connecting everything together through an internet. Why? So they can negotiate, so they can talk, so they can share information, so they can help each other take intelligent decisions. We have also something called Internet of Vehicles, which is part of the Internet of Things. So the Internet of Things have part of it is called the Internet of Vehicles, which are binding all vehicles together using an internet. And this will allow the vehicles to uh, cooperate together. So if the vehicle is, you know, uh, speeding up and there is no, uh, let's say, uh, you know, uh, brakes that can help the vehicle stop in the right time, then it will inform all the vehicles around it everyone will make way for this vehicle to pass by without the interaction of a uh, human. All right, the cloud, okay, the uh, satellites and satellite communication and so on. All right, the smart houses, the other group here are doing smart house and they're doing uh, energy uh, consumption control, you know, and many, many other things you would find you know, AI is definitely in each and every uh, uh, aspect that we face in our lives. Okay, uh, let me stop sharing. You know, this is uh, to ask you guys, is this understood? Is everything clear? I, I wish there was a, uh, you know, voting uh, button here. There must be one, but I cannot find it. Uh, do you guys understand well? Is everything clear? Anyone wants me to repeat anything? Okay, I have messages. Perfect. Okay, all right. All right, let me uh, continue. 
All right, so those are the different, those are part of the different domains that the AI is uh, uh, used in, okay? Uh, uh, the big part is uh, the smart city. All uh, what you see here in this slide is smart city, basically, okay? So uh, smart traffic, uh, uh, energy control, smart houses, GPS, uh, uh, whatever that is, all, all those kind of stuff is a smart city. And the two projects here, you guys work in smart city in different aspects of those uh, that are being uh, uh, shown. One of the uh, uh, students here said an amazing statement. When, when I first met them and I wanted to, uh, it's in the e-traffic project. <laughs> I think it was uh, Ahmed, I guess, maybe. Uh, he said, I, I was introducing the project for them. And, uh, and then he said, uh, I, I was telling that, you know, the project needs AI and so on. So that's what he said. I hope it's real AI, not just, sorry for the typo, not just a search tree. Amazing statement that he said. Absolutely amazing. I hope it's real AI not just a search uh, tree, okay? That's uh, almost exactly uh, how he said it, uh, you know, according to, I mean, you know, guys, my memory, how it is, so, uh, but that's the meaning of what he uh, wanted to say, okay? Um, uh, so why did he say that? And is search algorithm not AI? That's a very good question. Okay, so to answer this question, we need to answer, like we need to know the difference between, look at that, intelligence and learning. Intelligence and learning. My famous statement, you know, every learning is intelligence. Every learning is intelligence, but not every intelligence is learning. Not every intelligence is learning. So basically, the learning is a subset of the intelligence. Okay. So uh, uh, if you have, if you don't have learning, how can you have intelligence? Well, uh, uh, search trees, <laughs> search trees, and that's what he said. He considered the search trees uh, not real AI. Okay. And by the way, I'm not saying that he's wrong. Yeah, like, you know, uh, 50 years ago or 40 years ago, uh, search trees were considered uh, AI, real AI. That's the, the AI. <laughs> Nowadays, it's, uh, it's not, okay? Uh, so he, he's right. He's absolutely right. But let's first see what is the difference between learning and uh, uh, intelligence. The intelligence is to be able to be able to reach what you want intelligently. By intelligently, let's put many lines under intelligently because when you see the solution, <laughs> it's not intelligent at all. Uh, you will see, okay? And the learning is gaining more knowledge. So the system learns more, keeps learning. So that's the learning, okay? Every learning is intelligence, but not every intelligence is learning because you have systems that are considered intelligent, yet they don't learn, okay? Look at that. Here are applications, okay, that is based on intelligence, but not learning. Like what? Chess, chess, chess playing. How do we do it? Depth first, breadth first, best first and A star, what are those? Those are algorithms that we use to search a problem. What is the depth first? Imagine you have a tree, okay? A tree of options, okay? The very first node, the atom of nodes of this tree, okay? You know the atom, it's the node that doesn't have a parent node, okay? The atom of nodes in this tree is the state you are in, how the board is, where the knight is, where the queen is, and so on. Then 
you have many, many children that go under every node. What are those children? Different combination of solutions, different combinations. You get all possible combinations. Okay, that's why uh, 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 we, we, what we you do here is you, uh, you traverse, you traverse the solution space. We call you traverse, we say the same way. You, you traverse the solution space. You try every possibility, every possibility in the uh, solution to reach, well, I, I mean, your solution will definitely be one of them. You can reach it in uh, five uh, moves. You can reach it in one billion moves. That's you know another question, but you do try to get the search uh, space. Okay. What is the complexity of this? We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. It depends really on you know uh, uh, how we're going to be doing. You can get a worst case, uh, as you know. Uh, as an another example is the. Tic-tac-toe, here it is. Also, you can uh, use search techniques, okay? The uh, uh, GPS, the GPS, you can do it without learning. If you enter all the maps, all the routes that you have, which is, that's how it's done, then you can find the shortest path from one point, point A to point B. How would you do that? Graph traversing. Uh, tree, uh, search trees. You can find them uh, through search trees. Expert systems. They're also, what are expert systems? They are systems like database, but instead of having data, they have rules. Rules, okay? And then you start executing a rule after another. What is a rule? Simple way, if statement, okay? And then you go from one to another. Uh, there is one something called forward chaining. Another thing called backward chaining. This is not the subject for today. Okay, just you know, I'm telling you that there is something called expert systems. In the 80s, they started building expert systems because, you know, uh, to solve certain problem. The problem is the number of experts are not enough to cover the uh, domain. In other words, let's say. You have, uh, I don't know if you guys know Magdi Yaoub, that's, uh, you know, he's an uh, Egyptian heart surgeon. He's, you know, worldwide. He's just a guy, one guy. And you have uh, many, many patients around the world that suffer from heart diseases. You cannot, you can never guarantee this guy, okay, to see each and every patient. That's not possible. So how would you do that? you take the knowledge out of this guy's head and you feed it to the system as rules. And then you can replicate this rule everywhere. So if now, I mean, if the system is uh, built in a good way, if you ask the system, here are my symptoms, what do you suggest? The answer that you will get from the expert system is the same answer you will get from the expert that you extracted the knowledge from and put it in the system. All what you see here so far is intelligence, but not learning. You don't learn, okay? You do not learn, okay? All right, uh, guys, uh, is it clear so far? Is it clear so far? Yes, clear, doctor. Okay, all right. All right, so the search techniques are depth first search. We call it blind, blind search, depth first search. What is depth first search? Imagine you have a tree, okay, and you search in the tree. Um, let's, okay, let's leave the tree, the tree uh, for a while now. Uh, I got you into a maze, maze, okay? And you want to get out of the maze. The, 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 the most guaranteed way that will definitely get you out is to take all left as an example. Take all left. 
You don't take, mix left and right. No, don't do that. Take all left. So basically, it's a blind search. You don't see. You don't think. You don't see. You don't think. Just always take left, left, left. Eventually, you will have to reach the gate. You will have to. Okay, either, of course, I mean, in the maze, either all left or all right, it doesn't matter. Okay, that's exactly what happens in the depth first. Okay, if you have uh, uh, a node A, and A has children B, C, D. Okay, when you are in A, go to the B without thinking. Then the B has children E, F, G. Go to the E without thinking, and so on. Until you go to the node <coughs> that doesn't have any children. What would you do now? Roll back, go back to the parent and visit the next children and so on and so forth. I think you guys studied that in uh, data structure. Okay, it's called blind, blind search. Why is it blind? Because you don't see anything, you don't think, just take all left, that's it. So this is called depth. Depth because you go left, 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 left. You go deep until the, 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 the deepest point and then you go back and then take the next route and so on until you find your solution. Okay. The second algorithm is called breadth first. What is breadth first? It has, it's still blind, but it has a better visibility com uh, compared to depth. If you have a node A and node A has B, C, D as children, okay, you don't just go to the B. Before deciding to go to the B, you're going to be looking for B, C, D. Is one of them the, the goal? Is one of them the answer? Is one of them the thing that I'm looking for? Yes, found. Uh, 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 you, you need to note that in depth, you don't do that. If you have A and A has children, B, C, D, if C is the child, you're not going to recognize it. You're still going to go to the B and the children of the B and so on. And then you will uh, discover the C later on when you don't, don't find anything. In the subtree of the A, you will go back to the, uh, sorry, uh, in the B, you will go back to the C. Okay, that's breadth first. The best first is uh, you have a criteria. We call it heuristic. We call it heuristic. It's a function. Okay, it's a function that tells you whether you are going to the right direction or not. What is this function? Cost function. Cost. So as an example, if you want to go uh, uh, from uh, AUM to Shuir, okay, so uh, you have, let's say, five ways, okay, uh, uh, for those who are not uh, from Kuwait, Ali, <laughs> this is uh, two different places, okay, they're just two different places. So uh, uh, let's say you are in, in, in uh, AOM, all right, and you have five paths, different paths that eventually they will lead to uh, Kuwait City or Shuei or whatever. So you have a function that tells you if you take this road, it will cost you that long or that much, whatever, whatever your goal is. But if you take that one, it will cost you that much and so on. And then you select the minimum. That's why we call it heuristic search. Okay, what is the A star? The A star is just like the best first, but it has two different functions, okay? Uh, today, I'm not gonna be talking about those. I just wanted to uh, you know, talk about the uh, different uh, uh, search techniques, all right, which used to be considered 30 years ago, uh, the AI, which is, you know, it's still considered, but they're not, they're very, very rarely used. Now we have the machine learning, and we're using machine learning uh, to solve AI uh, problems. Okay, let me stop here. Are you guys following? Is everything okay so far? Perfect. Ah, yeah. Guys, are you there? Yeah. Perfect. 
I'm sorry. The thing is, I have to, when I share, I don't see the, <laughs> the chat. Maybe I'm very newbie to the application, but that's what happens with me, you know? So uh, I'm really sorry about that. Okay, all right. Okay. Uh. Oh, really? Okay, thank you for letting me know. Thanks. I'll share and see. I'll share and see. Thank you. So, uh, uh, Fatma, uh, are you following? Ali, are you following? Uh, Ahlam, Yusuf, Ahmed, everybody? Everybody, are you guys following? Is everything okay? Yes? Okay. Perfect. All right. Uh, let me share again and uh, try to uh, do the trick. Uh, Yara told me about. Let me chat here. Oh, yeah, uh, a separate window. That's actually uh, good. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Yara. Anytime, doctor. All right. Let me do that so I can see the chat. All right. So those are the uh, 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 search techniques uh, that I think Ahmed, it was Ahmed, I think, he, he said, you know, I hope it's real AI, not just a search tree. I love the statement, honestly. I really love the uh, statement. Ahmed, it was you, right? Ahmed Reda? Was it you? Who, who told me this statement? One of you guys. Oh, yeah, it was you, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. The statement is brilliant. The statement is brilliant. So, uh, yeah, so I hope I, uh, you know, I answered this, Ahmed, this is clear now, actually, you know, uh, every learning is intelligence, but not every intelligence is learning. So the first, breath first, uh, 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 A star, best, uh, those are AI, intelligence, but they're not really learning. <coughs> okay, all right. Um, so uh, if you look at here, the AI has many, many branches that you can see here, okay? One of them is machine learning, machine learning. My two projects, you guys are actually doing machine learning, okay? You're going to be doing machine learning. Machine learning can be deep learning supervised and unsupervised. Of course, this is very old. I would like to add here two things, semi-supervised and uh, reinforcement learning. So machine learning can be deep learning. Well, if there's deep learning, they should have included the other two, I don't know. Deep learning, supervised, unsupervised, reinforcement, as I will talk about, and semi-supervised, okay? Those are, the kinds of machine learning that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, they, like define the machine learning. Uh, uh, natural language processing. Okay, natural language processing. Natural language processing is the ability of a machine to talk to you, like Siri, like Alexa, you know, the ability like Sophia, like Sophia, the ability of a machine to talk to you, all right? So uh, the natural language processing also uh, gets divided into many, many things. Content extraction, you know, classification, machine translation, uh, uh, question answering, question answering we all know about. And we know, we all know if you have Apple, uh, uh, sorry, iPhone, I mean, you, you do know how uh, poorly uh, 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 Siri is, okay? 
because she doesn't really answer your question. She just forwards you to uh, Google, <laughs> right? So she's not really very well uh, trained, so to say. All right, and text generation is also uh, uh, natural language processing, okay? And one of the biggest natural language processing is, big problem is statements that are ambiguous. And those who studied the compilers know what ambiguity is, okay? Something like, uh, probably I mentioned it before, let's say something like, uh, uh, um, I'm happy, uh, I, I'm happy, okay, when I eat ice cream, when I eat ice cream, this is one of the huge problems that natural language processing is facing, okay? Uh, what does it mean? I'm happy when I eat ice cream. What does it mean? What do you think it means? Anyone can uh, uh, unmute and uh, answer? Uh, doctor, I know the answer because you did mention it before, so okay. I see it. All right. <laughs> okay, Joanna, that's right. So uh, I'm happy when I eat ice cream, like I eat ice cream. I'm happy when I eat ice cream, I scream as verb. So uh, the person is so happy that when that person eats, he screams, okay? <laughs> Syria. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's <laughs> that's that's how you know that it is. Of course, the problem can be solved with grammar because one of them has a better grammar than the other. Yes, I understand, but I mean, you know, those kind of problems are the problems that are facing something like natural language processing, and that's exactly why we need intelligence. That's exactly why we need intelligence. Expert systems, expert systems, as I mentioned, okay? Uh, vision, computer vision, all right, computer vision. What is computer vision? When, when the machine sees something, it understands it, okay? It understands, and, and the uh, e-traffic, you know, uh, your task after today is to do the, you know, the image processing, which is kind of vision, you know? Um, so vision is image recognition, which, which you guys will be doing, the e-traffic project the, for in, in GP1, of course. You know, in GP2, you will continue your project. But just in GP1, you will finish the image uh, recognition, and hopefully the system will recognize the images of the vehicles. Okay. Uh, it could also have machine vision, you know, which is uh, the machine vision and image recognition are the same. In order to, uh, well, sorry, okay, uh, I said it wrong. I am very wrong in this. Let me uh, say it correct. Machine vision uses image recognition. So in order for you to achieve machine vision, so if the, for, in order for the machine to be able to see, you need to implement image recognition. And that's exactly what the e-traffic uh, task is for GP1. Uh, same like vision, we have speech, but in speech, you know, speech to text and text to speech. And I think we both, like all of us, sorry, know that those two are, you know, uh, being used now in phones, you know, uh, speech to text and uh, text to speech. That's now very, very common. Planning and robotics are also different fields of artificial uh, intelligence, okay? Before I talk about learning, is everything clear? Is everything clear? Are you guys bored yet? I hope not. I still have a lot to go through. <laughs> okay. Not yet. <laughs> okay, fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So the learning, and I want you guys to focus, open your eyes and ears. If you understand this slide, everything is cool, okay? Learning, what is learning? We can divide learning into four different categories. 
The first one is called supervised learning, supervised. The other one is unsupervised. I should have moved the semi under the unsupervised. So supervised, unsupervised, then semi-supervised, which is something in the middle. And it's very obvious that semi-supervised appeared after the supervised and unsupervised. Okay, for a reason, by the way, I'll talk about it. And then we have reinforcement learning, reinforcement learning. What is this? What are those? Let's first talk about the supervised learning. And we're going to be focusing on the supervised learning for uh, like the two projects are going to part of their work is supervised learning. What is supervised learning? Supervised learning means that you provide you when you're training the machine, when you're training the machine, you give the machine the input and the expected output. The input and the expected output. As an example, <clears throat> you're training a brain. A brain is a neural network. You're training a brain to recognize pictures. So you give the brain a picture of a cat and tell the, the brain, this is a cat. And then you give the brain a picture of, uh, 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 yes, that's machine, uh, machine learning on uh, input output. That's correct, Fatma. That's absolutely correct. <coughs> so basically, just like as Fatma said, when you provide, you provide both input and output. So you provide the training sample and the expected output. So you give a picture of an Audi and you say, this is an Audi, the car, Audi, okay? Uh, you give it a BMW and you say, this is a BMW. Uh, you give it, a, you know, I don't know, a truck and you say, this is, and so on and so forth, okay? So you give the input and, uh, so you tell me, okay, what is the intelligence here? Like, what the hell? I mean, you're, you're giving the question and you're giving the answer. Then, I, I mean, well, where is the intelligence? Wait a second. Wait a second. There is huge intelligence here. Why? It's like when we give the computer a block and a 3D model, then ask if they learn how to map it. That's an amazing question, the amazing uh, example. Uh, Yes, that's an amazing uh, for, uh, example. Okay, so uh, uh, as I said, if you have the, uh, uh, you know, you give the, the, the input sample and you give the expected output, where is the intelligence here? It's not intelligent. No, it is intelligent. It is intelligent. How? Because in runtime, you're not going to be having the exact same input that you trained the machine upon. No, you're not. And when the, when the machine learns, it starts to approximate. Approximate. As, as an example, as an example, let me uh, get something and uh, I'll ask you, okay, just to prove my point. Just a second. Uh, I need something. Um, okay, this is a good example. Uh, where Where's the picture? Gone. Okay, just a sec. I don't know if I can share a picture here in this uh, thing. Okay. I'll, I'll share my screen then, better. I'm sorry, just a minute, okay, here. Let me... Let's do uh, an actual experiment. 
I'll stop sharing this for now. So I'll share the other one. Do you guys see this? Do you guys see it? What is it? What is it? Sofa. Sofa, are you sure? It's not a, a water a couch. It's not a watermelon. It's not a watermelon. Yeah, 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 okay. How did you know that? That's weird, right? I mean, it is a watermelon, yet, yet, as soon as you saw it, you know it's a sofa, it's a couch. All right. Uh, have you, for those, let, let me ask uh, uh, someone who said, Yara, as an example, you said it's a water, like it's, it's a couch. You basically said it's a couch. Did you see a couch before that looks like a watermelon? Did you? Oh, yes. You saw it? Okay. And then you, okay, no, okay. <laughs> Let me ask someone else that did not. Uh, uh, Ahmed, Ahmed, did you see a, a, a sofa that is a watermelon before? Okay. All right. Yara said, no, I did it. All right. Perfect. You did not. How did you know that it's a, it's a cow to them? That's how you, you, uh, your, your neural network works. That's the approximation. That's the approximation. As soon as you see it, it's one of two things, either the watermelon or the uh, 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 sofa, the couch. Yet, you know now that it's a couch. You have, you have seen a lot of watermelon. You have seen a lot of couches, right? But you have never seen a couch that uh, looks like a watermelon. Yet, when you saw it, you knew that it is actually a couch. That's exactly how your neural network in your brain works, okay? That's how your uh, 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 supervised learning worked, okay? That's how supervised learning worked. All right, <clears throat> so let me go back and share the uh, lecture here. So this is what I'm talking about, okay? The supervised learning approximates. So after, after you uh, 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 supply the system with the input and expected output, the system now starts to, thank you, Latif. <laughs> the system now starts to, you know, uh, you know what uh, watermelon and we know, yes, that's right. That's right. So uh, the system now can approximate. Your neural network can approximate, right? So this is exactly how it is. You get the supervised learning. You feed the system with all possible learnings. So all possible input and expected output. Then in reality, when you put the system to function, it will not get the exact same input, but the system will still get the correct answer. How? Approximation. How? Just like how you did it now. Just like how you knew that this is a couch. It's not a water melon. Okay. Uh, clear so far. Is it clear so far? Yes, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Perfect. Uh, Ali Qutb is my son, by the way, guys. <laughs> he's, uh, uh, he's in uh, grade 12 now. Let's start the supervised learning. Let's start the supervised learning. That's how the uh, supervised learning works. Look at that. You have raw data getting into the system. Okay. You do what we call, and please, the uh, e-traffic, you have to focus on this very well because that's exactly what you will be doing in the coming weeks. 
You have the raw data in, you do feature extraction. That's what we call pre-processing. Pre-processing, okay? You need to pre-process the raw data you get in. You need to pre-process it, okay? By pre-processing means to clean the data. You mean to extract whatever you want from the data, but you don't ever get the data as is and feed it. The system will poorly learn. So in order for you to work well or your system to work well, you have first to, de to do the, 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 the stage of pre-processing. And for you to do pre-processing, <coughs> we do what we call Feature extraction. What is the feature extraction in an image? Well, I don't know, colors as an example would be a feature, maybe. Um, 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 the number of pixels that build the shape, um, the uh, uh, width versus the height, uh, many, many features that you can extract. Of course, none of those is the actual feature that you would extract, okay? I'm just giving poor examples, okay? Uh, the good example is a histogram, and I'll talk about the histogram with the group that will do image processing, okay? Histograms is a good example. The histogram is basically uh, the number of uh, ones in a row and the number of ones in a column, okay? That's what we got, histograms. Um, <laughs> What else, if you, are, if you are learning images, if you're learning images, uh, as an advice, don't learn color. So you take the color image, convert it to a grayscale. What is grayscale? It's an image, but the maximum color is from zero to uh, 255, any color. The actual color, the true color is uh, uh, RGB. R is from zero to 255, G is from zero to 155, and B is from zero to 255. So basically 255 to the power three. <laughs> That's huge combination, right? This is the true color. This is what we call true color, okay? So you turn the color, the true color into the um, um, uh, uh, gray scale, and then you get the gray scale and turn it to black and white, okay, to do edge detection. So when you do the edge detection, now it's easy for you to say, oh, this is not a, a, a cat. This is a horse. This is an airplane. This, and why? Because the shape now when you do edge detection, edge detection is to remove all the details and leave the pixels, the points that define the outer borders of the shape, okay? This is edge detection. When you do edge detection now, the image is clear. You know, this is aeroplane, this is elephant, and so on. How? By teaching the system a lot of images and then it will approximate later. Isn't RGB better though? Okay, that's an amazing question, Yara. Yara is saying, you know what? Um, what you're saying is wrong, why? Because RGB has much, much more information. Yes, it does, of course. Of course it does. It has, you know, uh, the color of, uh, you know, the rivers, the colors of the uh, trees and so on. You're sure, of course. So the information stored in Colored images is way, way richer compared to a black and white. Yes, you're right. Then why convert it? Because you want to recognize the object, not the color. You are trying to recognize the object. So you want to reach the borders of the object. In order to be able to reach the borders of the object, then now, uh, you know, you need to convert it to black and white to get the borders. Why? Because you want to say, is there a border or not? Is, this pixel, is there a pixel here or not? Is there a pixel here or not? So you want it to be one or zero. What is one or zero, black and white? I don't know if that answered your question, Yara. Yusuf, let me, so the idea was to extract one information from 
data. Yes, yes, that's right, Yusuf. To extract or what, what you want. And it doesn't have to be one, but whatever you want. Okay, all right. So you do feature extraction, okay? Then you train the model. How would you train it after you do the feature extraction? Whatever feature you want, histograms, uh, uh, number of columns plus the number of rows, whatever. You train the system in a supervised manner. How you say this input means an elephant, and that input means a cat, and that input means a camel, and so on. Okay, when you train the model, now you have the model trained. Okay, you need to evaluate the model. How would you evaluate the model tested? You train now on, let's say, your system recognizes between um, uh, an Audi, a Mercedes, and a Toyota. Okay, those are the three cars that you uh, identify the car from. Let's say those are your, like, those three cars are the cars you want to learn. Uh, Yusuf, yes, sure, go, go ahead. Yes, okay. All right, so you're going to be giving the model uh, an Audi and see, will the model answer and tell you this is an Audi? Okay. When you test, you provide, let's say, 1,000 images and see how many of the 1,000 have been classified correctly. So as an example, you get 300 Audi, uh, 300 Mercedes, uh, 400 Toyota, okay? And then you see the evaluation, how many of those were classified correctly. If out of 1,000 you classified, uh, 950 correct, then your success rate in this model is 95%. If you identify 990, then you, you're reaching 99%. If you identify uh, uh, 850, then you know you need to keep training. <laughs> That's not an acceptable percentage, right? The acceptable percentage should be uh, 90s, like 94 or above. Uh, when we are training, uh, is it going to be beneficial to mix in unclear uh, pictures? That's an amazing question, uh, uh, Ahmed. Look at uh, what Ahmed saying. Ahmed says, now when we uh, actually uh, uh, get the system into running and uh, when the system functions, the system <clears throat> might have unclear input. It might have unclear input. When I'm training, will I be providing images that are unclear? Yes, you should. Ahmed, when I, when I uh, told you to collect images, I told you to collect images uh, from you know, the car, straight behind, from an angle, from an angle, a little bit above, a little bit lower, you know what I'm saying? Why, why? So you get all the possibilities. And I told you, when, when there is sun shining, uh, you know, uh, at night, whatever. Why, why is this? So you cover all the circumstances that, you know, the camera would be when the image is being captured. Yes, so yes, uh, uh, by unclear, you mean noise. That's a different story that I will talk about now. What is the grayscale? Uh, Ahmed, uh, did I answer your question first? Ahmed? Yes, perfect. What if the grayscale images are similar if we are working with blurred and unclear samples? Okay. Okay. That's a good question. But to answer this question, uh, let me uh, talk first about noise. What is noise? What, what is noise? Okay. Noise has many, many uh, different kinds. Okay, I'm really sorry, I don't have slides for them, but I'll talk and please try to imagine. Okay, the noise is uh, many kinds. One of them is called uh, 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 salt and pepper, salt and pepper noise. What is salt and pepper noise? Salt and pepper is sometimes you take a picture, right? And then because of either a problem in the lens or the illumination, 
you would find pixels that are white and pixels that are black. And this is very clear when you try to get a picture of the moon, okay, like a very far shiny object, or if you have a telescope and you try to take a picture of Saturn or something, you, you will find a black, like a, a, a salt and pepper problem. How do we fix this? Using uh, filters, we call them filters. Not the filters in, uh, in uh, what do you call it? The Instagram, okay? Filters is mathematical models that you apply, all right? It's mathematical models, uh, you know, that you actually move the, the array on the, on the uh, thing to uh, remove the, uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? The noise or to smooth it out or whatever. Okay, so this is the noise. Another one is called the motion noise, the motion noise. And all of us have seen this. When you're trying to take a picture of a moving vehicle, or you're trying to take a picture of something stationary, but your vehicle is moving, what happens? You would find that the, the, the object that you're trying to take the picture for, as if it has a tail of colors, right? This is the motion noise. This is the motion noise, okay? So those are the kind of noise that uh, 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 we need to uh, uh, know how to fix, okay? Uh, I'm talking about this to answer Ahmed's question, all right? He, he wanted to know about the noise. Now, uh, uh, for, for the e-traffic group, we, let's start by training the system on valid pictures first. Okay, and then we're gonna, uh, when we take the picture, we're gonna make sure that the uh, picture is uh, noise free by applying some filters. And then we're gonna extract the uh, features and feed it to the uh, supervised uh, system. Okay, Ahmed, okay guys, is this clear? Like grains, let me, I, I skipped that, I'm really sorry. Uh, like grains to photograph. For photography, I don't know about that. What is this, Fatma? Like brains in photography. I think I didn't get that. I, I don't know what brains in photography means. Is it like the... Fatma, are you there? Oh, I did? Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, okay. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, so in the supervised learning, you provide, again, as a summary, you provide the sample that you want to train, the sample that you want to, the training sample, and the expected output for every uh, thing. So you say, here's this uh, image, this is a cat. Here's this image, this is a dog. Here's this image, this is a snake, and so on. Okay, so you tell the system what is the expected output of the training, okay? So you kind of help it. Like, as an example, you show a child, you show a child something and you tell the child what it is. You show the child something and you tell the child what it is. But you didn't explain how the AI would handle such a case. Oh, sorry. Okay, you are saying uh, 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 you explain noise but you did not explain how the AI would handle the case. So handle an image or something that has the uh, 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 noise. Uh, it will handle it in two ways, two ways. And the two ways are cascaded. So one after another, okay? The first one is called, as I mentioned before, pre-processing of the image, pre-processing. What is pre-processing? Pre-processing is a phase that gets the image or the sample, whatever the data is, it doesn't have to be an image, ready for learning, okay? One of the uh, pre-processing stages is removing the noise, removing the noise. Noise has additive nature, so you subtract the noise, or multiplicative, multiplicative, so you divide the noise. I'm not an expert at all in... Uh, image processing, but you know, 
uh, this is how it works. Okay. Uh, when we need to go deeper, of course, you know, I'll, uh, uh, I'll uh, have some readings. I'll have some homework to do. Does this depend on whether the pixels are white or black? Well, what do you mean? Um, you mean the extraction of the uh, the extraction of the noise? Does it depend on is it white or black? Okay, all right. The thing is, you can never be sure whether the original image, the original scene, is white or black or whatever color, right? You can never be sure. But there are things, there are things that you can notice that you can be very confident, 100% confident. This is noise. How? How? Imagine that you have three by three pixels, <clears throat> three by three pixels. So nine pixels, uh, they are three by three, okay? The three by three pixels in the center, it's white, and the eight neighborhood, neighborhood is, you know, the eight uh, outside the center. The eight neighborhood is black, and the middle one is white. You would tell me, uh, who cares? It's just one, one pixel, yeah. But imagine now if every, every three by three square has a, a dot in the middle that is white and it's uh, uh, spread out of a resolution of, let's say, uh, <coughs> 1,000 of 1,000. <laughs> now the image is gonna be a disaster, <laughs> you know? So there must be a way to fix this. What is it? What is it? Filtering, the best one, the best filter in image processing that I have personally used to remove uh, a noise is called Gaussian. Gaussian uh, filter, okay? Uh, the Gaussian filter smooths the picture. Depending on the values of the filter, you choose whether to do uh, 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 edge detection or you remove the noise. So what we do is, to answer your question, Yara, do we know that the image has noise? No, of course not. But there are things that you can actually detect. You can say, oh, wait, this is noise. This is noise. What is it when you have a loner pixel, a pixel in the middle that is surrounded by different colors? That would be a noise for sure. That would be a noise. Uh, how do we fix it? The first stage, as I mentioned, is the pre-processing. Use something like Gaussian filter to remove those uh, things. Gaussian filter will solve the problem? No. Gaussian filter will, will remove the uh, 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 noise for sure, but it will smooth the, the image. <laughs> it will smooth the image. So it's not going to be, uh, you know, this like, you know, uh, a very clear image. It's, it's going to be smooth. So how do we solve this? We, we saw, we removed the, the, the noise, but we, we, we have another problem now. How do, how, how can we fix this problem? Remember? Supervised learning, what does it do? Approximation. Now that you got the image, uh, uh, you got the, the noise out of the image and it's a little bit uh, like, you know, smooth, you feed it to the system, the system will recognize the original image, well, what, what is meant to be the original because of the approximation. Uh, I don't know if I answered your question, Yara, if that's clear. Okay, I have another question here, Ahmed. Since the projects are going to take around a year of work, how are we going to save the progress of the AI, like the things it is learned? Perfect question, Ahmed. Perfect question. So he's saying, okay, you know what? Uh, uh, the project is very long. And uh, you're gonna keep uh, uh, training the system that's good for you, but then what? Uh, uh, how can we save this? How can we save it? We're gonna be learning many, many images. When we run the program, are we gonna be learning the things again and again and again? No, the answer is no. 
And I'll ask you, Ahmed, to wait for, if you don't mind, six slides. Six slides, okay? And everything will be clear about this particular question, which is amazing. It's an amazing question, Ahmed. Really, really nice. The uh, second model is called unsupervised learning. The unsupervised uh, works like how the supervised wor works, but you don't feed it with any expected thing. You don't. You don't tell it what it is. You do not tell it what it is. Okay. Uh, so the system learns by itself. And what, what does it do? Classify. How does it classify if you don't tell it? The system will notice the difference. The system will notice the difference. How will it notice differences? By statistics. Something like the mean and the standard deviation and so on and so forth will help the system learn without supervision. Without supervision. Okay. And uh, by the way, if we, if we uh, think about the uh, autonomous behavior, the system to be independent, uh, the, the concept of uh, learning uh, with unsupervised behavior is way, way, way more appealing because it doesn't really depend on a human. It can learn by itself, right? I don't know if you heard about the uh, chatbots. I think I... I uh, talked about it to the e-traffic group, the chatbots that uh, Facebook uh, made, and they started to, 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 you know, to talk to each other. The, the, the purpose was to train the chatbots so they can talk. So they made two chatbots on, with unsupervised learning, and they started learning how to talk, okay, to each other. After a while, they started developing their own language so that the human doesn't understand it. And both of them started to teach each other and both of them started to talk to each other, okay? And that's when Facebook uh, decided to stop the project. Now it's getting out of control. It's too dangerous, okay? Let me uh, uh, answer this. Is rocket landing projects, for example, unsupervised where, okay. Okay, that's actually uh, also an amazing question. Uh, she's saying, uh, Fatma saying, uh, you know what? <clears throat> when, you, when you bring a, a, you know, a space, I don't know, shuttle or whatever, and this shuttle wants to land on a planet, that we haven't visited before and we are not really aware of the surface of this planet. How does it work? We cannot actually teach the system. We cannot train the system how to land. Why? Because uh, how would you give it uh, supervision? Like how would you actually do supervised learning for it? You don't have an expected out. You don't know what it is. So does this work unsupervised? Okay, that's an amazing question. Um, it works in uh, one of two things, either unsupervised or reinforcement learning. Oh, Ahmed, Ahmed uh, bit, bit me to it. Reinforcement, <laughs> amazing, Ahmed. Reinforcement, that's right. So it's either unsupervised or reinforcement. Why? Because both of them, they do not need an expected output. They don't need an, uh, 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 an expected output. The only one that needs expected output is supervised. So you have one of two things that you can choose from, unsupervised learning or the reinforcement. And by the way, the most commonly used with robotics is reinforcement, reinforcement learning, as I will talk about uh, in a few slides. Amazing question, Fatma. Thank you very much for the question. Let me first uh, read the rest. Uh, probably I still didn't answer it all. <laughs> uh, where I tell the computer, go run this 100 times and try 
to simulate the rocket safety, of example, then get uh, confusing a little. Yeah, uh, uh, okay. Let me talk about the reinforcement. And maybe this second part will be more obvious. Okay. I don't know, Fatma, if I answered your question in a proper way, if you get it or, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. All right. So here is no, not a problem. Here is the unsupervised learning. Okay, here is the unsupervised learning. So it learns by itself. It, by, by learning some mathematical models like, you know, the mean, the average, the standard deviation, that you know what I'm saying? So those kind of stuff. Here it is, reinforcement learning. Um, to properly talk about reinforcement learning, are you guys okay so far? Are you guys okay? Is it uh, getting too long? Okay, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna, uh, I like, I'll, I'll divide it into two lectures, okay? So I'll finish those slides and then continue the other, because I have many things, I'll continue the other uh, on a different day, okay? So uh, the reinforcement learning is basically like how you teach a child. So, you uh, tell the, the child, you know, uh, uh, or let me say it this way, if the child does something good, you give them a chocolate, which is really bad, of course, chocolate is really bad, but okay, whatever candies you're gonna get uh, for the child. And if the child does something bad, you're gonna give them time out, punishment of some kind, okay? This is exactly, exactly how reinforcement learning works. By a reword, by a reword. The reword can be positive, chocolate, or negative, punishment and timeout, okay? And the machine, by nature, wants to maximize the reword. That's how the machine is built, to maximize the, the reword. And then the learning system, when the machine does something good, it raises the reward for the machine. And when the machine does something bad, it brings the uh, reward down, okay? So that the machine next time doesn't do that, doesn't do that like how you do for the child. You give time out or some kind of punishment so to protect the child from whatever dangerous thing that they would uh, do the next time. So this is basically the idea behind reinforcement learning. So now, can we apply this for the uh, uh, space shuttle landing that Fatma talked about? Absolutely. How, you know, when the, when the shuttle is, is landing and if it's not landing in a proper way and it tries to lose balance and the sensors, uh, you know, see that, the, that there is a, an imbalance that is happening, then, you know, this action will be rewarded negatively and the machine will choose a different action, a different position for the shuttle so that, you know, uh, it lands uh, safely. Okay. All right, uh, Fatma, does this answer your question? Okay. Uh, Ahmed, don't we need to have a limiting factor for this. Limiting factor for the reward, you mean? Oh, like a time limit or for a maximum amount of uh, steps. Okay. Uh, Ahmad is basically saying that the machine could keep trying and it never reaches a solution. And this is what we call in, in learning theory, convergence problem. The, the problem, the, 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 the solution, the, the methodology of the solution doesn't converge. Converge means to reach the proper solution, as is right. And this is one of the biggest problems of artificial intelligence. What proves, you know, if you, if you come up with a new solution, okay, all you need to do to prove that your solution is valid is to prove that your solution converges. You're absolutely right, Ahmed. 
you have to prove that the solution converges. Okay, and if you do, done, your solution is accepted as one of the solutions for this uh, problem. So what he's saying is we might not ever converge. Okay, we might not ever converge. You will, why? Um, maybe I should have talked about this in the beginning when I was talking about the learning theory. Um, we have two kinds of optimality, okay? We have local optimal and we have global optimal. We have local and we have global, okay? What is local and what is global? I miss uh, now the BBB that I can uh, write in it. I don't know if I can uh, do that here. Oops, that's the signature. <laughs> okay, let me uh, write with this color. Okay, uh, why is it so big? Oh, line width, okay, all right. Look at that, look at this. Oh, uh, there's no free writing. Where is free writing? Free. Oh, here it is. Look at that. Something like that. Okay. Uh, imagine you are moving in uh, here desert. You know, you reach something here. You think this is the maximum you can ever reach. You go down, 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 down the hill. Here you are. When you are here, you think you are in the global optima. No, you're not. You're in a local optima, right? Why? Because when you go above the hill again, you have the global optima here. Why are you saying that the global optima is the minimum? Because you are minimizing error. You know, when you minimize error, you get the maximum performance, the maximum quality, because the error is minimum, okay? So this is the difference between the local minima and global uh, minima, okay? So uh, you will reach a local minimum. Now, how would you know that this solution is valid with a threshold? You cannot reach the exact solution that you would be so lucky. It would be, you know, a hit of luck, right? It's not like it's gonna happen every time if you reach the optimal value. <clears throat> but you can reach, you know, a close solution, like a solution closer to the optimum. So what you do is you say, I have a minimum threshold here. If I pass this threshold, then I'm fine. I don't have to reach the minimum as long as I am within the uh, acceptable region. Because if you keep trying, as you said, you will never reach and you will keep trying to find the solution. Ahmed, is this uh, clear? Yes, perfect, perfect. Uh, I have a question for reinforcement learning. Is the reward limited to only one condition? Like a safe landing? No, 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 no. The function could be multivariable. It could be multivariable. But in the end, you need a value to judge by. All are multiple values. But at the end of the day, you need something to judge by, okay? So if you have your solution is, as an example, um, you want to land in somewhere safe and the temperature between this limit and that limit, as an example, okay? Then you have two variables here. When you reach those two variables, you will give it a high reward. What if the reward, a function of two, a function of the two, right? A function of the two. So it doesn't have to be a single value. It could be many, many things. Okay. Like in your project, the smart house, Ciara, you can say, you know, when the temperature is in this level and the humidity is in that level and the pressure is in this level, then you are in a safe region and you give it a high reward if you want to actually implement reinforcement. Got the idea, Ciara? So, uh, okay, all right. Okay, let's build a brain. 
let's build a brain. What is the brain? What is a brain? Like, how is it built? What we call neural networks. Your brain, my brain, is nothing but neural networks, okay? It's neural networks. What is neural networks? Look at that. This is the minimum processing unit in your brain. This is the neuron. This is the neuron. The cell body here is the processing unit, believe it or not. This yellow thing is the input. It inputs the signal to the processing unit. Okay. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Those kind of things, the hands and those. Let me draw it for you. Those ug ugly things and, and the other side. Okay. Those are the inputs. Those are the inputs. And the yellow thing is the output. Okay. How did I know? Any cell can have one or more inputs, but a single output. One or more input, but a single output, okay? This single output can sh be shared by many, many other cells, yes, okay? But it has a single value, a, sig a single signal that is going out, okay? Look at that beauty now. Look at this beauty. Here is the artificial neuron. Look that and look at this one. What are those? What are those? Those are the inputs. Look at the inputs here. Those. Here they are. Who is this in the middle? This is the cell body. Who is that? The output. That's the yellow uh, output that you see. What is this? This is the artificial neuron. <coughs> so far, so good. Are you guys following? Yes. Perfect. 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 OK. So look at the inputs here. The inputs are values, x1, x2, x3, until xn, whatever. And what are those? We call them weights, weights. You can see the weight as a, uh, you can see, oh my God, shut up. Okay. You can see the weight as, um, 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 uh, what do you call it? A resistance. A resistance. You know, you know, for in electric, electrical engineering, you know. Uh, so you have the uh, input signal coming, and you have here a resistance. Now, okay, you multiply this by that. So the weight is something that you multiply. The weight is something that you multiply. So you multiply the input by its weight, as you can see, and then you sum them all up. Do you see that? You sum them all up. So as an example, let's say X1 multiplied by W1J plus X2 multiplied by W2J plus X3, what? Uh, X3 multiplied by W3J and so on and so forth, okay? You sum them all up plus something called bias, bias. That's one in the, in the, here, let me make a, here. You see this? This is the bias. You sum them all up and you feed them to what we call a transfer function. We call it a transfer function. It's a function, just like any function. You give the function an input, you get an output. That's the output of the neurons. Okay, the neuron, one neuron. Then where, where is the intelligence here? The intelligence is picking the values of the weights. The intelligence is picking the values of the weights. 
figuring out the values of the weights that will get you. If you get this input, you get the, the, the right output. Setting the weights here will determine if you get, if you feed certain input, are you getting the actual output or not? Like the, the, the desired, I mean, the desired output or not. How do we find those weights? By the training process, by the training process, the learning process. The learning algorithm is the, is the one that finds the optimal values or the near optimal, let me say near optimal, near optimal values of those weights. Okay, all right. Near optimal values uh, for those weights. Uh, uh, now, Ahmed is saying, what is the transfer function? The transfer function is just a function. I'll say now as an example, x squared, whatever mathematical function, x squared. So whatever, after you sum them, you feed the transfer function, you get the output. If it's x squared, it will never be x squared, by the way. I'll show you the candidate functions now. But let's assume for now it's x squared. All right. So uh, uh, let's say after you uh, uh, get the um, weighted sum, that's the weighted sum because you get the weight multiplied by the input and then you sum them up. If you get the weighted sum, you, uh, let's say the weighted sum is uh, 10, then the output is 100. Why? Because the transfer function is x squared and the input is x, so you get to the output is x squared. It will never be x squared, by the way. It will never be x squared, okay? But just as an example, okay? Um, uh, is this clear so far? Uh, we can have more than one function. Um, uh, you can have more than one function per layer. And I'll show you what uh, layer is. I'll show it to you now. Okay. Uh, do we uh, make it learn using the four methods? Um, uh, you can make it learn using either supervised or unsupervised, yes. Yes, perfect question. Do we use this for deep learning as well? Absolutely, yes. You are a network as well for deep learning. Absolutely, absolutely. That's correct. Okay. Uh, is this clear before I move to the next uh, slide? Is this absolutely clear? 100%. Okay, perfect. Look at those functions. You see, those are the functions that are commonly used. Okay. Yes, of course. Of course, and the, okay, can, can uh, I still didn't talk about it by the way. This is the learning algorithm that we're gonna be talking about. Okay, Yara, all right. So uh, this is the transfer functions. Of course, you don't need to memorize any of them. I mean, when I'm doing neural networks, I just uh, look them up, <laughs> right? So there, there are many, they're just, this, those are just examples, okay, there are many. This is the most commonly used and for the e-traffic, you guys are gonna be using this, okay? This is called sigmoid, sigmoid function. The input, as we have agreed, the, the input for the function is the weighted sum. So every input multiplied by its weight and then you sum them all up. You input that to the sigmoid, the sigmoid will give you and out. What is the sigmoid? Here it is. I wrote it for you. Well, I didn't. I mean, I got it for you. One plus e to the power minus the uh, weights multiplied by the inputs plus b. Okay. This is, of course, the every weight, the weight vector multiplied by the input. Okay. You will do that by hand, by the way, next time. I will make you do that by hand so you will understand it very well. Here is the neural network, 
the multi-layer neural network. The minimum number of layers, well, the minimum number of layers is one actually, but I mean, the, the commonly used is three. Why three? One is, hit, one is input layer. Okay, wh what is this? Okay, anyhow. One is input layer. One is the, uh, 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 the uh, hidden layer. We call it the hidden, okay? And the other one is the output layer, okay? Every line that you see between any two neurons have weight. And the learning algorithm figures out the uh, 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 value of the weight for each and every arc in this uh, uh, neural network. How do we do this? Okay, uh, before I show you how, I'm sorry. Let me just talk about something. Um, uh, tensor, TensorFlow is a package, Fatma, that's right. TensorFlow supports uh, the, uh, the uh, design of, a, you know, like the implementation, sorry, of a neural network. That's right. And the intention, MATLAB, by the way, does it too. MATLAB. MATLAB does it too. No, no, you don't have to use MATLAB. <laughs> TensorFlow is a good option. Okay, so uh, here is the uh, uh, neural network. The number of, look at that, look at that. What is the number of the neurons in the input layer? What is the number of neurons in the hidden layer? And what is the number of neurons in the output layer? The number of neurons in the hidden, in the input layer is the uh, number of, uh, uh, like it's the feature length, feature length as an example. Let's say, just as an example, okay? You are building for no reason a neural network that learns the OR gate, OR, okay? The OR gate is, uh, you know, uh, it's an OR. So when you say zero or zero is zero, zero or one is one, one or zero is, zero is one, and one or one is one, okay? I'm saying that for, uh, you know, so uh, uh, this is the input. So the number of input neurons here are gonna be three, three in neurons, why? The first neuron will take zero or one. The second neuron, zero or one. The third neuron, the result. So zero in the first, zero in the second. So the third has to be zero. Remember, if it's supervised learning, you provide the input and the output. So if you give zero or zero, then the third neuron is gonna be zero, right? One or zero, one. Zero or one, one. One or one, one. So how many input neurons? Three, why? That's all you need. The input is uh, uh, zero or one for the first neuron, zero or one in the second neuron, and the result zero or one. So in this case, you need two neurons. How about the output neurons? How many, either one or two, depending on your design. How you can use one, and this one can be a value of zero or one, a value of zero or one, which is not recommended, okay? What is the recommended output? The number of cases is the number of neurons. What is the output? It's either zero or one. How many cases are those? two, then you should have two output neurons. You're classifying cats, dogs, and camels. So how many output neurons? Three. You're classifying elephants, elephants, camels, uh, crocodiles, uh, birds, and uh, people, whatever, okay? So five categories. So how many output neurons would you use? Five output neurons. Okay, so based on the number of categories you want is the number of neurons in the output layer. Okay, that's a good question, Latifa. That's actually a beautiful question. She's saying, you just said that it's not recommended 
to use one neuron. Why? Okay. Uh, the reason is that maybe if the neural network doesn't give output at all, it's going to be the initial value is zero, maybe, right? But when you do it as classes, the class that will give you a one is the right class. So it's safer, you know, uh, to give a value. And by the way, the approach that I'm saying, uh, I, I said it, I have to clarify this. The neuron that will give you the maximum value is the right one. Okay, how about the one that will give you V1, 100%, we call it winner takes all. Winner takes all. So the neuron that wins will have all the values for it and the rest will be zeros. Latifa, did I answer your question? Okay. Uh, Ahlam, uh, is it possible to have a single layer neural network? Yes, absolutely. We call it recurrent network. We call it recurrent network. Okay, how that's, okay, look at that. Do you see this one? This, the input one, that you will find the weight and going recurrent, looping on itself, looping on itself. No, in this case, you don't have input output done. It's a, the input and the output, recurrent. It's called recurrent, okay? You have many, many, many shapes of neural networks, by the way. Uh, this is not, this is the most commonly one, okay? But I mean, you have a huge number of different kinds of neural networks uh, that each and every one is famous of solving one of the AI problems. If you want to be specialized in neural network, then this is a huge domain that you can, you're going to be uh, doing nothing in your life but learning uh, new models of new uh, neural networks, which is amazing. Okay. Now, Yara asked, uh, can we have more than one winner? Okay. That would be a problem now. Uh, Yara said, okay, you said uh, the winner takes all. Yes, I said that. She said, uh, can we have more than one winner? Okay, I'll rephrase your question. Can we have two or more neurons that have the maximum value? So in this case, you cannot really choose. Yes, we can. But then the, the system like doesn't work fine. Yes, it doesn't work fine. Why? Lack of training. If you reach this stage, no that your training sample is not enough. You need to train the neural network again until the neural network can take a decision, okay? Because now the neural network in this case is telling you it's either this or that, okay? What does it mean? It means that the neural network did not train enough. So you can keep training the neural network until it actually tells you it's either this or that, okay? Yes, absolutely, Ahmed. It, it didn't uh, actually make a decision. It did not make a decision. Okay, is this clear so far? Is this clear so far? Guys, is this clear? Okay, all right. Okay, uh, I've been talking for two hours. I think I made it very long for you guys. <laughs> So the algorithm that we use to train the neural network is called back propagation. Back propagation. Back propagation is two phases. The first, okay, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. Back propagation is one of the algorithms that we use to train a neural network. There have many, many other algorithms, okay? I said it wrong, I'm sorry. Back propagation is one of the algorithms that you use to actually train a neural network. The, uh, why am I uh, uh, stating the back uh, propagation here? Because it's the most basic. And if you understand it, you know the idea of all other algorithms. So the idea behind all other algorithms is the same. Just different functions, different connectivity. You know what I'm saying? But it's the same. So if you understand this, you know how neural network works. And you can still use it in your application. Back propagation is two phases. Phase one, feed forward 
inject the data and see the output. When you see the output and you know the desired output, you can determine the difference. The difference, we call it the error. So you can calculate the error this way. By calculating the error, you go backward, backward, and change the values of the weights based on an equation that I will show you next time, okay? So if you have a, a, a neural network with three uh, layers, input, hidden, and then output, the forward phase goes like this. The signals go from input to hidden, then from hidden to output. You get the output. You evaluate the difference. Is the difference between the output that you got and the uh, uh, desired output uh, in, uh, like acceptable? If it's acceptable, then the neural network ha ha have been trained. Uh, congratulations. If not, then you need to change the weights. How will you change the weights? You're gonna go focus on this from output to hidden. So you're going backward from output to hidden and change the weights between the output and hidden, between the output layer and the hidden layer. Change it to what value I will show it to you next time. And then when you're done, you change between the hidden and the input. Okay, so from so the forward from input to hidden and then from hidden to output, the backward is hidden to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, sorry, output to hidden and then from hidden to input. That's the back propagation that we're gonna be working uh, on next time. I'm really sorry, it has been two hours, I know. Uh, all the algorithms are similar. No, not, not similar to back propagation, but it's the same idea that you need to uh, change the weight. How you change the weight? In this back propagation, you evaluate in the forward phase, and then you change in the backward phase. The recurrent, as an example, you don't do that. There's another way of changing the weight. But in the end of the day, all of them change the weight. Got the idea, Ahmed? Okay, uh, is everything clear, guys? Is everything clear? Okay. All right. Yes, Fatma, go ahead. Uh, doctor, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you well. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, my question may be a little uh, a little um, dumb, but like, please bear with me. Um, I have a question regarding the difference between deep learning and supervised learning because to me it's, it's very confusing. <laughs> Just like how reinforcement and supervised learning. Actually, uh, so for for data. Yeah. 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 Uh, like w w I know that we we have um, like a training. Um, um, I don't know what you call it, like algorithm, and then there is a validating uh, algorithm. I'm, I'm not sure what you call, um. Is it a set? Okay, all right. Um, uh, she's asking about something called deep learning. Okay, and she's asking about the difference between supervised learning and deep learning. Okay, learning in general and deep learning. What is the difference? Uh, the problem in order to understand uh, uh, first why we need deep learning before we uh, see the difference, we need to know that for the neural network, it has a maximum capacity, okay, as learning. Uh, it has a maximum capacity. Imagine your brain is like 100 billion neurons, okay? The biggest neural network that was achieved, um, probably those statistics is not correct because it's 10 years back, but it was 64,000 neurons. So it has a maximum capacity to learn. What if you do overtraining, overtraining, what is overtraining? That you try to teach the neural network more than its capacity. What's gonna happen? The neural network will forget everything it has learned and whatever you push, you're gonna be getting random output. Okay, but we have a, a, something called big data now. We have something called big data. What does it mean? It means that the, the, the original uh, uh, neural network models doesn't work anymore. 
they don't work anymore. Why? Because you don't even know the size and capacity of the data you're getting. Imagine you're building a system to learn about the Google uh, uh, searches or the Facebook clicks. Can you imagine that? It's billions per second as an example, okay? So in this case, the neural network is not gonna work. So how are we gonna learn this deep learning now? Deep learning. Deep learning has many, many, if it's a neural network, deep learning is a concept, by the way. It doesn't have to be a neural network, okay? Like supervised learning. You can do it in a neural network, but you can also do it in many, many other things. So it doesn't have to be like knowledge base as an example. So it doesn't have to be, okay? But uh, if we're talking about neural network as an example, the deep learning is a, uh, for it is, uh, like CNN as an example, it's a, uh, sorry, uh, CCN, whatever. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a network that is a neural network, but deep, okay? How is it implemented? Many, many, many layers. And the connectivity there is huge, the number of neurons, okay? Oh, but in this case, can you learn, uh, like teach it supervised? No, <laughs> you can't. Why? Because the, the amount of data that is coming and the size of the network doesn't allow you to do supervised learning. You can't because the data is huge and the network is huge, <laughs> you know? So uh, you can't really do that. And that's when we do something similar to unsupervised learning. So the question is now, what is the difference between deep learning and supervised learning? Okay, deep learning is a kind of supervised learning. Uh, sorry, unsupervised learning. It's a kind of unsupervised learning. Every deep learning that I'm aware of is unsupervised. Not every unsupervised is deep learning because you can actually have a neural network that is you know, uh, small enough to recognize uh, or to classify uh, images or whatever, and you do it unsupervised as mentioned uh, before, okay? I don't know if that answered your question, Fatma. Oh, uh, you, you asked uh, more questions, let me see. So it isn't fit and output. No, you can't, that's the thing, you can't. In 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 uh, in um, in, in um, uh, deep uh, learning, you don't feed really an input like an output. So you can you can feed something like class label, but you can't uh, uh, feed an actual output. You can't. Why? Because what if you find an error? What's going to happen? You can't correct the output the, the error now because the huge amount of data that is coming, okay? All right, to answer this question, I need to talk a little bit, uh, like two minutes about big data. Big data is data that has what we call four Vs, and lately they, they became five, four Vs, okay? What are the four Vs? Something called velocity. Velocity means the speed of the data arrival, how fast the data is coming, okay? When I tell you uh, if the clicks of the Facebook is going some server, you can definitely imagine how fast the data is arriving to the server. So, so the velocity, the veracity, okay? The veracity is the, you know, not being, uh, not sure about how consistent the data is, okay? The variety, the different kinds of the data that's coming from probably Twitter, from Facebook, from, you know, you know, uh, so I said uh, velocity, uh, veracity, variety, and volume. Volume is how huge the data that is coming is. With those four V, you can't do anything now. You cannot do anything. You cannot calculate, you know, because mathematics, when it comes to um, uh, um, uh, uh, big data, is useless. And I'll tell you why. Fatma, are you there? Do you hear me? Do you still hear me? Hello? Okay. All right. Um, when I tell you I want to 
uh, fix the error in the uh, uh, network when I'm doing deep learning, okay? I'll say, okay, get me the sum of data. <laughs> the data is infinite, big data is infinite. So what is the sum of data? I don't know. When we talk about big data, statistics becomes useless. It's undefined, it's meaningless, why? When I tell you, get me the average, you know, in order to calculate the error, as you will see next time, you need to give some kind of average. Okay, get me the average of the data that is coming. Oh, all right. Well, you know, the average is the sum divided by the count. Okay, perfect. What if the sum infinite? What if the count infinite? Okay, so it's infinite divided by infinite. What is this? <laughs> it's undefined. It's undefined. God, do you see where the idea here, uh, Fatma? Why the supervised cannot work here? So that's why you cannot feed an input. Because if you feed an input, it's useless. And if you feed an input, it's definitely not to be supervised for whatever other reason. But not to be supervised because you cannot get statistics so that you can actually teach the neuron. And that's why when we talk about deep learning, we are talking about um, uh, unsupervised models. I don't know if that answered your question, Fatma. I think I'm confusing the ground truth with output. Uh, Okay, the ground truth is the absolute value that you get, you mean? Uh, doctor, the projects I've been uh, referencing are mostly uh, 3D meshing and they always use a ground truth and they also give the machine an output. And then they generate um, a machine learning model, um, a deep learning model. And that's why I'm confusing you. Okay. But yeah, you do answer, okay. thank you. Okay. Uh, then, then I will have to see this uh, research. Probably, then the learning algorithm doesn't depend on the any of the statistics. It, well, not probably. It has to be this way, <laughs> because when we talk about big data and deep learning, uh, the uh, statistics become obsolete. You cannot do anything about the uh, statistics. I'll be uh, very interested to see the project you're talking about, uh, Fatma. If you don't mind, if that's okay. Okay. All right. Uh, guys, uh, are you still awake? Yes? Okay. Do you guys have any uh, kind of, okay, I'll, I'll let you go now. I'm really sorry for making it that uh, long, two hours now, I guess. Uh, I hope uh, you find it okay. I hope you, you've learned today. Uh, and uh, we're gonna be having the uh, second uh, shot of the lecture later, okay, next time. All right, so this is not all, we have more uh, slides. So uh, I'll uh, send you guys um, invitations about the next time, I'll tell you when. Okay, and we're gonna be meeting, all right? Okay, thank you very much, you guys, for coming. Thanks a lot. And uh, wait for the coming invitation, all right? Thank you very much. You told Ahmad you would answer his question after six slides. Okay, what was the question again, Ahmed? I don't know. Uh, what was the question, Ahmed? It was about how to save the pro. Oh, okay. Uh, about how to save the progress. Thank you very much for reminding me. Look, now what do you see here is weights, numbers, float numbers, double, right? The weights. So basically, you can take those weights put them on a text file. And when you want to continue learning, you load the file and assign the values back to where they belong. Do you see it? 
those are values, right? Those are values here. So you can basically save them to a file, load them back. Is this clear, guys? Uh, <laughs> so we share the text file. You, what, what do you mean share? Look, uh, let's say as an example, uh, this is the, what we have here. You have four and you have five. So between the, the input layer and the hidden layer, you have 20 values, 20 values, four multiplied by five. Those are being saved in a file. Let's call it between input and hidden, okay? In the same file or another file, you can save between those and those. Those five and four, they're also 20. They don't have to be the same, right? So you can save the 20 in another uh, file, okay? Uh, to send the progress between the group. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's absolutely right, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it has to be uh, done like one after another. It has to be sequential because if you do it in parallel, then weights will be different and you will not be able to merge them. Okay? So it has to be sequential. All right? Okay. Any other questions? Is there anything uh, you guys need? Let me uh, first uh, stop sharing so I can uh, see you guys. Uh, all right. Uh, no questions, clear, clear, clear. Clear thus far. Good night, guys. <laughs> okay. Fatma, thank you very much for uh, that question. I'm waiting for the research, if that's okay. Okay. That was an amazing uh, question, by the way. Thank you very much. Thanks, Fatma. Thank you, guys, for uh, attending and uh, wait for the next invitation. Okay. All right. Okay. Good night, guys. Good night. <laughs>